the 150th anniversary of the gold rush, a documentary was released, Gold, Greed, and Genocide. We learned that the gold rush was not only a part of our painful history, its impacts continue to affect California native peoples. In this annex, 20 years after the original film was made, we want to share some updates about how we are addressing these issues and the progress we are making to heal the cultural and environmental wounds we suffered as a result of the California gold rush. This project right here, the Gold, Green Genocide, I've taken it to schools and I've showed this you know, this, uh, the movie, and I've showed the curriculum booklet, and, and, and it's like, uh, they say, yeah, and all that, you know, but nothing happens. And so one day, it's gonna happen, though. It's gonna happen, and they're talking about it now here in Lake County. You, we gotta start changing the curriculum here in our schools. Start telling the truth, no matter how much it hurts, no matter how much it makes people feel bad, it'll always heal in the end, as long as it's truthful. From the original video, we learned that over 100,000 tons of mercury were dug out of the mountains and transported into the Sierra Nevada for miners in the gold rush who used it for extracting the gold ore. Geologists today estimate that approximately 7,600 tons of this mercury were lost into the rivers of the central Sierra Nevada alone, leaving a legacy of toxic mercury released into the California rivers, lakes, and watersheds. Now that we know that this heavy metal enters the food chain, especially through the fish that serves as the basis of our traditional diets, it enters the human body, causing neurological damage and other harms. It's especially dangerous to the developing brain and nervous system of unborn babies and young children. Many of us learned about this toxic legacy in the original video. In the last 20 years, the extent of this contamination has become much better known. The only way that we ever learned about this was when we started our own groups. Uh, matter of fact, we uh, set up what we call the Lake County Mercury Task Force. And that was actually the first time we started to really understand the poisoning and the issues with the mercury. Now, elemental mercury is, another name of it is quicksilver. It's the stuff in thermometers. But the trouble is that once it's in a waterway, that that mercury will wash down and flow into a lake or a coastal lagoon or a bay. And in the sediments where that elemental mercury will come to rest, there's bacteria that will convert that mercury into something called methyl mercury. And that methyl mercury is the kind of mercury that's very toxic. And the thing with methyl mercury is that it bioaccumulates so that it stays in your body. You slowly excrete it, but not very rapidly. So every time something larger starts eating something smaller, you get more and more and more mercury concentrated in the flesh of that organism. We've stopped all our fishing and, and use of waterfowl, uh, water plants, because of the concern over the contamination. The problem is, it's like they're losing a big part of their culture not being able to go into the water. I mean, most of them don't even get in a boat anymore or come down here. You know? They might come down and maybe fish a little bit, but they throw the fish back in. So we really want to bring back the teaching that this lake gave to us, especially our kids. They need not to fear it, you know, and they need to grow up and learn the culture around it. But how can you do that when, you know, it's the fish are filled with mercury? So after Gold Green Genocide, uh, we met with tribal leaders in California and it was determined that knowing that mercury causes permanent learning disabilities to developing fetuses and if native people are eating their traditional foods, those fish are contaminated, that we needed to get out and tell pregnant mothers and the healthcare service providers that serve them about this issue. There was very little known in the medical community at this time, and so we had to meet with the cutting edge doctors and researchers that were trying to identify what mercury does in the body. That was our first step, and then we went out and told everyone, these are the fish that are safer to eat, and these are the fish that are not safer to eat, and these are the huge pile of them that we have no idea if they're safe or not to eat, but we'll get you more information later. As SIA was formed, the idea was is that we could not continue with what would be called risk reduction, which is telling people how to change their diets to avoid mercury in fish. 
we needed to move into something that actually was removing the toxins from the environment. So we started working on exposure reduction. And the best way to get rid of the exposure is to not have the toxin in your foods to begin with. Government cleanup has been in large part a dismal failure. Well, again, the first thing it, 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 that I see that it impacted is our family, our community, togetherness and unity. Because that's what we did. We did that as a family group. Our name right now is, is uh, technically is called Elam Indian Colony, uh, but we always went by, and it was a Bureau of Indian Affairs that gave us the name, the Sulphur Banks Indian Rancheria, which they knew about the sulfur and the mercury. So they're in total denial of that, and unfortunately, they never ever came out to help us. It was always we were battling against them because they covered it up. See, the BIA road department is the one who came in here and bought the toxic mine tailings to use as landfill. So again, that is a really problem when your own government doesn't really be, is not there for you or with you. But the threats to human and environmental health from mercury contamination is now recognized as a global problem. In 2013, the United Nations Environmental Program finished drafting a global treaty to protect human health and the environment from the adverse effects of mercury. It includes measures to phase out and clean up mercury contamination, including calling for cleanup of abandoned mine sites. The impacts of mercury have really been acknowledged on a global level. Last year, the Minamata Convention on Mercury, which is a brand new legally binding convention, uh, came into effect. Uh, this is an important tool for our advocacy work, uh, an important tool that we can utilize as global indigenous peoples to minimize the impacts that mercury have on our communities. In January 2013, I attended INC5 for the Minamata Treaty, a global legally binding treaty on mercury emissions. I was part of the Global Indigenous Peoples Caucus, which was a great group of women. Uh, we were advocating for the inclusion of indigenous peoples in the resulting treaty. So as part of INC5, I had a unique role of really being able to share firsthand the impacts of mercury emissions specifically and legacy mining due to the gold rush here in California. As a California Indian woman, I was able to share how legacy mining and the toxins from mercury have impacted our waterways, our access to our traditional food systems and fish. And it was something really exciting to be part of. So it was really important to contribute that perspective because our communities are still suffering from contamination and from the toxins that are impacting our traditional food systems here in California. Gold, greed, and genocide also talked about the gold rush's impacts on California native cultures, communities, and ways of life. It showed how tribes were massacred, forcibly removed from their lands, sexually exploited, and sold into slavery. But it ended in a positive way with a commitment from a young California native to keep on dancing and practicing his culture. I am happy to tell you that our cultures have stayed strong and that California tribal communities are working to restore our languages, cultural practices, stories, songs, and dances. So what we're looking at doing is survival camp for our youth and start training them about the environment, the foods that we eat from this lake, and bringing back fishing, traditional fishing. And I'm talking about fishing lines and traps that we used to fish by. Building community, which includes healing community and you know, healing myself and others and being part of the struggle and protecting sacred places and trying to fix the minds of those who need it, whether it's federal government folks or corporations or even our own people. We have even had land returned that was taken from us long ago. 1849, everybody knows what happened then in California, it's the gold rush, that everybody came up and started coming through and that's when they start taking the land away from the Indian people and all Indian people, not just the we are. But in that, we have been acquiring land. We acquired 1.5 acres of Indian Island. Then the city of Eureka gave us 40 plus acres back of Indian Island. Then we purchased uh, 40 plus acres of Cock Ribbon Island in the uh, Eel River. So we have a foot in the Eel River, we have a foot in the bay. And that was in 04, we had a big celebration. But in those two, three years I was on, I said, I want the rest of the island back. And they just looked at me and said, 
we knew that was coming. <laughs> I said, of course. And so we started the process before I left council. December 4th, 2018, the city of Eureka unanimously approved the return of over 200 plus acres of the island. And now we're waiting on the state of California to write off on the tidelands. But there are people who still own private property up there and we know how it feels. So we're going to try to be the best neighbors people can have. The wounds of the gold rush have not fully healed, but they are healing. Even today, real information about what happened to us is not being taught in most schools in California. We need to stand together to change that reality and share the stories passed down from our elders. We also need to recognize, support, and celebrate the amazing work that California Native peoples are doing to restore and rebuild our communities and nations for ourselves and for our future generations. Hey, hey, hey.